There's trouble at Magnolia Gardens, a botanical garden in my hometown of River Heights. I need your help to get to the bottom of it before anyone gets hurt any worse than they already have been, including myself. Let me explain. Yesterday, I went to visit Magnolia Gardens' new exhibit on poisonous plants, fatal flora. I had been invited on a personal tour by the garden's director, a family friend named Florence North. When I arrived, Florence invited me into her office for a cup of tea. I knew something was wrong immediately. Her pupils were dilated, and she kept scratching at her arms. I asked Florence how she was doing. She told me she started to feel ill soon after the Fatal Flora exhibit opened three days earlier. When I pressed her for more information, she said she'd been wondering if she was spending too much time breathing in pollen and spores from the toxic plants in the new exhibit. By the time she was done explaining, we'd finished our tea. I offered to clean up the cups. That's when I saw a mysterious pink stain on the bag that held her tea strainer. The pieces fell into place for me in an instant. I asked Florence if she drank this particular tea regularly. She replied she had a cup every morning. Then I asked how many people had access to her office. She responded that she usually kept the door locked when she wasn't inside, but she'd forgotten to close up on the night the Fatal Flora exhibit opened. Florence gasped when she finally realized what I was getting at. Someone must have poisoned her loose leaf tea. I knew that with the culprit still on the loose, there wasn't much time to waste. I had to start talking to suspects and tracking down clues, and that's exactly what I did. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to solve the case before the poison started to take effect that evening. It affected me more strongly than it did Florence, likely because Florence takes her tea with a heavy pour of milk, and I take mine plain. I'll likely be discharged from the hospital in a few days, but that's not soon enough. Not with the poisoner still at large. Since I'm still too sick to close the case myself, I need your help. I've enclosed the evidence I gathered from the gardens and the notes I took. During my preliminary investigation, I was able to narrow it down to five suspects. The rest is in your hands. You need to figure out which of our five suspects poisoned Florence's loose leaf tea on the night the Fatal Flora exhibit opened. As you may already know, you'll need to figure out which suspect had the means, motive, and opportunity to poison her. If you find evidence that any suspect doesn't have either means, motive, or opportunity, you can safely consider them to be innocent. If I were you, I'd start by looking through my case notes and suspect profiles. They should give you some context as you begin to dig into the rest of the evidence. After that, you should look through the rest of the evidence to see what you find. It's up to you. Nancy Drew. All right, you guys, hello, welcome to Mystery Night. Um, so I'm so glad that you guys are here because we have another mystery to solve and I definitely can't do it alone. Uh, you know, Nancy sent me this letter and I'm, I'm gonna need help. I'm gonna need help tonight. So um, yes, another mystery, I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad you like it. It's my fit for tonight, my mystery fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but um yeah yeah i've been so looking forward to this for quite some time <laughs> i'm so glad you guys enjoyed that let me tell you when i heard it for the first time i was literally transported back to being a kid i was six years old again at the computer and it was the most like complete feeling ever. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed it, yes. So um, the letter that she sent is what we will be basing our case off tonight. Um, there's trouble at Magnolia Gardens. So the first thing that Nancy said to do was to read her case file. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna start off and read Nancy's case file. Um, let's see here. Let me pull it up and we can read it together. So that way we can kind of get a feel for what's going on here. Okay. This is Nancy's case file that she sent me from the hospital. And, uh, let's go ahead and read it together. So the mystery at Magnolia Gardens. All right. So Florence, Florence is the new director. She's been poisoned. These are the symptoms that Nancy wrote down that Florence had. So Florence was having a lot of throbbing headaches, some dilated pupils, uncomfortable rashes up her arms, irregular heartbeat, vivid nightmares of being chased through the Magnolia Garden hedge maze by an unknown assailant. Ooh, 
Gives me like nightmare vibes from Curse of Blackmore Manor. <laughs> That's awful. Okay. What else we got? Florence's office. Okay, so Florence keeps her office locked whenever she's not inside. She's the only person with a key. I first notice a strange pink stain on the cloth container that holds her tea strainer upon further investigation. I found similar finger-shaped stains all around the area where Florence keeps her tea and on the doorknob to her office. Ah, okay, so that means that whoever is the poisoner, they must have had like the poison on their hands, like their fingers, and so it's all over whatever they touched. Hmm. And just so you guys know, I do have the tea strainer that Nancy sent me. This is it. That's the pink stain right there. So we'll keep that in mind. I haven't opened it though. I guess I should probably do that. Oh, this is the, this is the tea strainer that she had. Looks like that. But yeah, that's the bag that has the pink stain on it. I do, I have my handy dandy notebook, you guys. I have it with me. I'm ready to write down. Okay, let's continue. So Florence says she always keeps her office locked, but that she accidentally left it unlocked on the night the Fatal Flora exhibit opened. That was the only opportunity that the culprit had to poison her tea. Here's what I know about that night. The Fatal Flora exhibit opened three days before my visit on Tuesday night. The opening reception event for the exhibit began at 6.45. Okay, so we should probably write down like a timeline. Okay, so... Reception? Was at 6.45, okay. From 7 to 8, Dr. Latour was scheduled to deliver a lecture on the chemical properties of some of the poisons found in the exhibit's flowers, okay. So 7 to 8 p.m., there was a lecture. All right, and then a post lecture was held from 8 to 8.30. 8 to 8.30, post lecture. All right, let's read the evidence that was collected. Okay, interviewed possible suspects, took notes, took the strainer and strained the strainer bag from Florence's office as evidence. When Florence came back from the lecture, she found a bouquet and a postcard right outside her office door made a sketch of the bouquet and took the postcard as evidence. Asked Florence if any of her employees had gotten into any trouble lately. She gave me a report she had written about Parker. Ooh, we're gonna have to check that out later. Found a sticky note with a strange message written on it in the hallway outside of Florence's office. Looks like someone dropped it. Took an exhibit brochure from the Fatal Floor to get a better understanding of the plants in the exhibit. Took a map of the Magnolia Gardens to guide me around. Kept an eye out for the items that Heather said were stolen from the gift shop. Found the packets and tin in a trash can outside the main building. The tin is locked, but there's definitely something inside. Found a notebook on the ground inside the old greenhouse, which is strange since nobody's supposed to be working there anymore. I took the most recent page since that appears to have been written during the week of the poisoning. Found an interesting looking fax in Dr. Latour's office. Borrowed it. <laughs> Not not Nancy stealing something from someone's office. She never does that. Okay. Saw a checklist on a communal refrigerator in the administration building. Looks like tensions were high between Sherwood and Tara the week the exhibit opened. Borrow that as well. <laughs> and then missing plants. As I searched Magnolia Garden for clues, I noticed that some of the garden's plants had recently had cuttings taken from them. I asked Florence about it, and she said that there was no reason that anyone should be taking cuttings from plants on display. I wonder who took all these plants and what their motivations could have possibly been. The following plants had cuttings taken from them. And then it lists the plants. Okay. <gasps> that was a lot of things at one time. But we learned a lot. So we know we kind of have a general timeline of when the crime could have possibly happened. Could have possibly happened between the post lecture or maybe the lecture that was happening that night but we'll have to kind of dive into more of the evidence to see if we can figure that out thank you so much for the sub ah uh, 
Thank you so much, Courtney. I really do appreciate it. That's very kind of you. So here, okay, so I don't know where you guys want to start. Where should we start? There's so many places we could start. We could start with the um, suspects. We could read about the suspects. There's also the tin that we found in the trash can. It is locked, and that's the weird sticky note that was on it. So we'll have to kind of investigate that as well. Suspects? You got it, Amy. Let's do it. Let's go down and look at our suspects. Okay. Let's do uh, suspect number one. Okay. <laughs> Amy said, hmm, suspects and then the lock thing. I know, I'm so curious to know what's in the lock thing. Okay. Florence North. All right, she, she is the director of Magnolia Gardens. Okay. And this is what Nancy found out about her. Florence has only been the director for about six months. When the previous director retired, she was up against Sherwood for the promotion. Ah, so we got to write that down. That right there, perfect motive, right? Work rivalry. Florence did it! <laughs> Can you imagine if, if, if she actually did? Like, what if she poisoned her own self? Hey, it could be possible. <laughs> We've had crazy things happen like that on cases before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm going to write that down. That Sherwood was jealous. I'm going to say promotion jealousy. Okay. So she drinks a cup of tea in her office every morning at 9 a.m., she started to feel sick around 5 p.m. the day after the Fatal Flora exhibit opened. The night Fatal Flora opened, Florence was in her office for most of the afternoon doing administrative work. She heard a loud crash come from the lab at around 6.50. Ooh, okay. So what's interesting here is that the actual reception started at 6.45. So that means that someone wasn't at the reception. They were in the lab doing something. But she didn't check on it since she was so busy. 20 minutes later, Florence realized she'd lost track of time and that she was running late for the opening night event. On her way to the opening, Florence saw Parker inside the lab cleaning something up and heard Sherwood in his office. She said this about Sherwood. He was blasting classic rock like he usually does when he's rushing to meet a deadline. I wish I could say I was shocked he missed the opening of his own exhibit, but frankly, that's not unusual behavior for Dr. Sanderson. Hmm. Tara was already speaking when Florence walked into the event. She saw Oliver and Heather at the lecture too. Tara finished speaking at 8 o'clock, but didn't stick around for the reception. Florence said this, I had to mingle and field questions about the lecture on her behalf, which was a little awkward since I'm not a scientist. She seemed like she was in a hurry to leave. Hmm. So let me get this straight. So at this event, so Florence is coming in a little late. Okay, so she's late. But Parker and Dr. Sanderson probably saw her. Tara was giving a lecture and Oliver and Heather were at the lecture too when Florence arrived late. So all of them were there, just Sherwood and Parker were not there for the lecture. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. I had to mingle and yeah, yeah, yeah. Florence left the event when it ended and went back to the administrative building to retrieve her car keys from her office. When she got there, she saw Sherwood in the break room muttering angrily under his breath and fiercely scratching at his arms. <gasps> oh, that means maybe he he could have gotten some poison on him. <gasps> oh, maybe that's why maybe that was the loud uh maybe that was the loud bang in the lab. Maybe he accidentally got some of the poison on himself and he was mad about it. And like was scratching because he'd gotten it on himself. Could be. Alright, let's finish up the last little bit. 
When Florence got to her office around 8.30, she noticed there was a bouquet and a postcard on the floor outside the door. I've asked her to give both of those to me as evidence. Florence realized she'd accidentally left her door unlocked when she left for the lecture. She made sure the door was locked for real this time and left around 8.45. Hmm. So 20 minutes later from 6.50 would have been 7.10. So from 7.10 to about 8.30, almost an hour, her office was left unattended and unlocked. Hmm. This is super interesting. I'm so invested. Courtney says loud music was... What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank you so much, Tori. Gifting more subs to people in the community. Thank you so much. You're amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Courtney said, loud music covers up the sounds of shady business. You're right. He could have just been playing loud music to cover up whatever he was doing in the lab. This is good. So I'm going to write that down. So I'm 710 to about 830. The office was unlocked. And that Sherwood and Parker were not at the lecture. Okay. Could the door be lockpicked? I think she left it open by mistake, and so I think someone intentionally walked into her office, like even though it was unlocked. Yay, I'm so glad you guys got a sub. Oh, Tori, you're the best. Thanks for all the gifts to everyone. Okay, I gotta take my jacket off for this because it's getting real, y'all. <laughs> it's getting real. Okay. Let's look into um, our next suspect. Hopefully, I wonder if this, is this going to be, yeah, let's look into Sherwood a little bit. Oh, man. Okay. Dr. Sherwood, y'all. So, Sherwood is Parker's uncle. Oh, 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 oh. okay. And he seems extremely fond of him. Here's how he talked about Parker. Oh, the kid's a genius. He'll have this pick of a job once he graduates, but I'll bet anything that he's going to end up here. I always used to take him to Magnolia Gardens when he was little. It was his favorite place in the whole world. Still is. Sherwood says he had to miss Fatal Flora's opening to complete a large amount of ultra-high priority paperwork that he needed to turn in as soon as possible. He stayed in his office playing music for most of the night. He finished his work a few minutes before eight. A few minutes before eight. Okay, so if Dr. Sherwood is finishing his his work a few minutes before eight, that is a, a good like 30 minute window where he could have gone into Florence's office. It could be, it could be. That's what I'm wondering too. Okay. He could be wanting his family to get a position there and keep some kind of hierarchy role. I don't know. All right, let's continue. Let's see. So, when he finished his work, is that where we were at? He finished his, yeah. When he finished his work, oh, no, no, no. He finished his work a few minutes before eight and decided he'd missed so much of the event already that there was no point in showing up for the last half hour. Mmm, that's suspicious. Okay. When he finished his work, Sherwood peeked into the lab to check on Parker. According to him, I only looked in. I never set foot on any part of Dr. Latour's turf. Let's just say it's hostile terrain to, for me for more than one reason. Ooh, okay. So Dr. Latour and Sherwood don't get along. I see. All right, well, let's continue. Sherwood said Parker looked busy at work when he checked in on him, so he left Parker alone. He then went into the break room to find something to eat. Sherwood heard Tara come back to the administrative building from the main building at some point after 8, during the time he was eating, but he couldn't say exactly when. That's right, because you guys remember? Tara didn't stay for the post-lecture. 
Florence had to do the post lecture and Tara left. So that could be something too. Let's continue. Around 8.20, Sherwood heard someone knocking on a door in the hallway. He looked into the hall and saw Oliver standing outside Florence's office. Oliver was holding something, but Sherwin couldn't see it because Oliver, Oliver's back was to him. Oliver called Florence's name as if he was trying to coax her out of the room, but nobody came to the door. That's when Sherwood looked away. Hmm. When I tried to ask about why Oliver might be visiting Florence so late, Sherwood said that I should ask Oliver myself. Hmm. Quote from Sherwood on Oliver. The guy tries to be all stoic, but he's got a whole lot of feelings buttoned down under those big cozy sweater of his. Sherwood stayed in the break room until around 8.50 eating dinner and in his words, tying up some loose ends. When he finished up, Sherwood drove Parker back to his dorm at RHU and then took himself home. So it sounds like to me that Parker is some kind of intern, maybe like a college student of some sort. And so they're re- he's related to Dr. Sherwood. Maybe that's how he got the internship or job or whatever he's doing. But that means that Oliver also wasn't at the post lecture. So there's a lot of people not at the post lecture, which would have been a 30 minute window that they could have walked into Florence's office. Okay, so we should keep those things in mind. All right, let's keep on moving forward. We'll go on to suspect number three, which is going to be, I think, is it is it going to be, who's going to be? Yeah, Dr. Tara, Dr. Tara Latour. Okay, you guys, this is who was giving the lecture, was Dr. Latour. Okay. Oh, maybe I should, let me move... Dr. Latour's image a little bit over so we can read. There we go. Okay. Tara is trying to breed strains of produce that need less water to grow. She said if her project succeeds, it could mean a more environmentally friendly way of farming. However, Tara also mentioned her project hasn't been as successful as she'd hoped, saying this, the project setbacks can be chalked up to lack of funding and or lack of good assistance. Parker hasn't lived up to my expectations, and Florence won't invest enough money into my vision. Oop! Okay, you guys, we gotta write it down. That's that's motive if I ever saw it. So Tara could possibly be angry at Florence, her boss, because she's not investing enough money. Okay, we wrote that down. Still, I'm going to make sure this study succeeds no matter what. On the night of the lecture, Tara planned to show up to the exhibit early, but Parker made a mistake in the lab that set her back. Tara seemed frustrated with him, saying, Of course Parker's incompetence would make me run late to my own lecture. He somehow managed to trip while carrying my most promising samples, making a huge mess for both of us. Both Sandersons are as clumsy as they are negligent of lab safety protocols. It's fine that Sherwood constantly forgets about the existence of protective eyewear and gloves, but it's baffling that Parker never remembers something so basic. Tara told Parker to clean up the samples he dropped. Then she left the administrative building. She arrived at the Fatal Floor exhibit around 6.55, so she was about 10 minutes late to the reception. Tara noticed Sherwood wasn't at the event. She sounded annoyed that the curator would miss the opening of his own exhibit. She also noticed Parker sneak into the event at one point, but that he seemed more interested in the refreshment table than the lecture. (sighs) No, not the refreshment table. Uh... Tori said, Tara did it! It's Tara! It's Dr. Latour! (laughs) There's literally so many possibilities on who it could be. (laughs) <laughs> Parker does have priorities. If we don't if we if we don't watch out, he may be over there eating a whole cheeseburger. <laughs> okay. I'm going back and I'm reading. Let's see. 
Tara left as soon as she was finished speaking at 8 o'clock. When I asked her why, she said it was because she doesn't like to mingle and because she had some work to complete in her office. When she got to her office, Tara could hear Sherwood's music playing through their shared wall. She said that it turned off at some point before she left, but she couldn't say exactly when. Mmm. Also interesting. So here's another thing that we can note reading this suspect profile. We do know that Sherwood really was playing some music. That's been confirmed by another person that they heard this music. But this is the first time we've heard that his music cut off at one point. So at some point, someone did cut off his music. Okay. While she was in her office, Tara saw Oliver through her window. He was moving around in the greenhouse from 8 to around 8.15. She couldn't make out exactly what he was doing. She left for the night at 9 o'clock. As I left Tara's office, I noticed a lab coat hanging in the corner, covered in pink stains. No! <gasps> Okay, okay, but in my opinion though, would that not be the perfect cover-up that you steal Dr. Latour's like lab coat and that's what you use the poison for to make it look like she would do it because she's already a scientist? I think that's, in my opinion, my guess is what happened. Yeah, Parker sounds like he doesn't have the qualifications to do that job, but since he's related, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it could be Dr. Sherwood helping Parker to be the next big thing or something, but I have no idea what to think. Yeah, there's there's a lot of motives right now, but we have um, some things we have to unlock and see what they do, and so we got some time. Okay, let's finally talk about Parker. I feel like those were the four biggest suspects that we talked about. All right, Parker Sanderson. Oh, so we were right. He's a college student intern. Parker is currently a senior at River Heights University in addition to working at Magnolia Gardens. His internship is part of a year-long program that the school has with the Botanical Garden. Parker said that he hopes to get hired on as a full employee once he graduates. Currently, most of his duties involve helping Dr. Latour with her ongoing research project. Parker is also Sherwood's nephew. Here's what he said about Sherwood. Uncle S always had my back. Growing up around him gave me the confidence I have today, plus the interest in plant biology. He's a total natural leader. A lot of people don't see that in him, just like how they don't see how smart I really am. But they will someday. For both of us. Parker missed most of Fatal Floor's opening night event because Dr. Latour asked him to stay in the lab to clean up a number of samples that he accidentally spilled shortly before the event began. He said this about the task. I don't get why I had to be the one to clean up. The janitor would have gotten in the morning. I honestly kind of think Dr. L just wanted to take her frustration out on me since her project's not going the way she wants. It's honestly just a matter of time before Florence shuts it down. After cleaning the spill, Parker got bored and a little lonely in the lab, so he snuck into the lecture for roughly 20 minutes from around 7.15 to 7.40. He notes that Heather, Oliver, and Florence were all in attendance for Tara's talk. See, that still is lining up with what other people say. So they're all there for the lecture. At 7.40, Parker took some snacks from the table at the back of the room and went back to the lab. He knew that Sherwood must not be done with his work yet, since he could still hear music playing from Sherwood's office. And he couldn't go home before Sherwood was ready, since Sherwood was his ride. Parker said that he occupied his time by getting a little extra internship-related work done and that he noticed and that he noticed Sherwood sticking his head into the lab to check on him a little before 8. Parker says that he finished his work around 8.45 and that Sherwood gave him a ride back to RHU a little before 9. Okay. What are we thinking? There's so many things... Nah, man, Parker did it. <laughs> Everyone did it. It's one of those mysteries. Susie, what's up? I didn't know you were here. Welcome, welcome to Mystery Night. Can I lurk here? Okay, you can, but I don't have any command set up, so it'll have to be like a, like a, like I don't have commands to lurk, but yeah, <laughs> I haven't set them up yet. Courtney says, or was something suspicious split and needed to be cleaned up right away? Hmm, that's a good point. I don't know, Courtney, the music really does sound like the convenient bluff to make people think Sherwood was in there. That is also true. 
he could be trying to make it seem like he's in his office. He could have taken Dr. Latour's lab coat. Hmm. Especially, too, it's, it's important to note that Oliver, Heather, and Florence, they were all at the lecture. Dr. Latour was giving the lecture. So. Hmm. Could be. Okay, we have two more suspects, and then we're going to dive into, I guess, this locked box. Amy said she wanted to see what was in the locked box. All right, suspect number five. Ah, so this is Oliver. Okay, let me move him over a little bit so that way we can still read. Yeah, there we go. All right, Oliver. Oliver takes care of the plants in Magnolia Gardens. He mainly works out of the new greenhouse. Sherwood told me to ask him about Florence, so I did. It wasn't hard to get Oliver to open up. It seems like he wanted someone to talk to. He got visibly upset when I mentioned Florence's name, saying, Florence and I were involved for the some time romantically, and it was fine. More than fine. It was fantastic. But I mean, it was fine in the sense that there's nothing against it in the employee handbook. We both checked. Still, she asked me to keep things quiet. She wanted to be professional. I wanted to be more open, but I respected her wishes. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! <gasps> it's a love triangle! It's a love triangle! No, oh, maybe not. I mean, it could be, but maybe not. <laughs> But, they were a thing at some point. Branda, what's up? Welcome to the stream. So glad you're here for Mystery Night. So glad to have you. Lover's Quarrel. It could be. It really could be. Let's keep going. I'm invested. Because of this, Florence and Oliver would never be affectionate at work. This is what they did instead. Oh, oh, oh. Instead of saying, I love you, whenever people were around, I'd say... Perennial. It's a term that means through thick and thin, basically. Even if a perennial might look dead in the winter, you can count on it to bloom again some springtime. Stop it. Y'all, they had botanical puns and jokes together. Hmm. Okay, continue. Oliver said that when Florence was promoted, it put a strain on their relationship. She was even less comfortable dating a subordinate that she was a co-worker. They tried to make it work for several months up until last week when Florence broke off the relationship for good. <gasps> okay. Okay, you guys, that's it. We have new motive. New motive. Oliver. Upset because Florence broke it off. All right. That's good motive. I wrote it down. Okay. Okay. On the night of the opening, Oliver showed up around 6.30. He told me he was hoping to help set up as an excuse to talk to Florence. But Florence didn't show up until after Tara started speaking. Here's what he said about that. When Florence walked into the room, I saw her look down at the empty seat next to me and walk over to the opposite end of the room and sit instead. That really hurt. Oliver said he couldn't stand the thought of Florence ignoring him during the post-lecture mingling, so he slipped out a few minutes before 8. Then he went to the new greenhouse to complete some horticultural tasks before he left. At 8.15, Oliver cut through the administrative building to get to his car. He thought he heard someone moving around in Florence's office. Oliver called out to Florence through the door hoping to talk to her. When nobody responded, he left. When Oliver got to his car, he saw Heather leaving the abandoned greenhouse with Gertrude Robertson, a woman who visits the garden every Tuesday. The two parted ways, got into their respective vehicles, and drove away. Oliver went home a little after 820. <gasps> Ooh, that could be. That could be. Hmm, that, that sounds really promising as well. Okay, I noticed quite a few stains on Oliver's clothing, which isn't out of the ordinary for his job. However, one of them was a similar pink stain to the one in Florence's office. Oh, so many things that could be. Oh my gosh, what's up? We've been raided. What's up, Ginger Honey Love Beat raiding with a party of seven. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mystery Night. So glad to have you guys. We are currently reading our suspect profiles 
because we're trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, one last one to read about. Let's go. We can do it. Last one. Okay. Last suspect is Heather. She is the gift shop manager. Okay, let's read about her. Heather greeted me with a chipper hello, and when I told her who I was, she started telling me about a potential case of theft from the gift shop. According to Heather, she was doing the inventory in the morning after the Fatal Floor exhibit opened when she noticed that a small tin, three seed packets, and a postcard went missing the previous night. Oh, okay. For those just joining, this is what Nancy sent me. Okay, she found this uh, tin, and she also found these three seed packets in the trash can. So this is what was stolen from the uh, gift shop. So we'll look at that here in just a minute. Let's continue reading. She also said that she found 95 cents on the counter after the talk, and since the postcards cost exactly that much, she assumes that money was meant to pay for the postcard. It's odd that there'd be payment for the card, but not the seeds or the tin. Heather seems to take pride in her work. She noted that she knows Magnolia Garden's regular visitors by name, favorite flower, and astro, astro, astro sign. She said that she always pitches ideas on how to improve the botanical garden to the director, although she seemed to get a bit less cheerful when I asked her about that, saying, I totally think we could start selling flowers. Oh, and we should get a costume mascot who's dressed like a big magnolia. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> but Florence doesn't take me seriously like Felix, the old director, did, which is, like, not cool of her. She thinks she's better than me because she's in charge of the whole place and I'm just the gift shop girl. But someday she'll realize that she shouldn't underestimate me. Ooh! Heather! Heather, Heather, Heather. So here's what I'm hearing. Heather thinks that Florence looks down on her. And that is another possible motive that she could have poisoned Florence. So I'm going to write that down. Do -do 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 -do. All right. Heather. Upset at boss. Okay. <gasps> this is juicy. Okay, where were we? On the night of the opening, Heather showed up to the event space a little before 6.30 to set up the chairs and the refreshment table. She noticed Oliver arrive a few minutes after she did. Ooh, so Oliver got there early too. Heather then listened to the entirety of Tara's lecture. This was her takeaway. Dr. Latour had like a weird pink stain on her blazer. It's like so embarrassing for her to have given a whole speech in front of that many people looking like a total mess. I mean, yikes. After the talk, Heather spoke with several regular visitors to the gardens, including a woman named Gertrude Robertson, before eventually leaving the building at around 8.10. When Heather was in the parking lot a little later, she saw Oliver come out of the administrative building, get into his car, and rest his head on the steering wheel. Ooh, here's what she said about that. I bet he'd been looking for Florence, which is like, so sad of him, no offense. It's like, take the hint, you know, she's just not that into you. She drove home around 8.20. Okay. Okay, what? What the what? There's so many things to digest here. So many things that we have uncovered. Oh my goodness, okay. So here's the deal. If you're just now joining, I catch you up a little bit. Nancy um, was trying to catch a poisoner. The poisoner poisoned one of her good friends Florence North. Florence is the director of Magnolia Gardens, um, but unfortunately Nancy also got poisoned, so she's in the hospital and sent us a letter and all of her case files and evidence so that we can investigate what's going on. So we just read about all of our suspects. We have a really good idea of where we're at, of where we're going. We know kind of what the timeline is. We know who was what and where they were. So now it's just a matter of time of figuring some other things out. So what do you guys want to do first? There's so many things we can look at. Do you guys really want to look at the tin and the packet seeds and all of that? Because we can.
<laughs> get get in that box, the locked box. Okay. Everyone really wants to know what's in the box. It's okay. I'm dying to know too. So, what we just found out is that this was sitting in a trash can. It was stolen from the gift shop, as confirmed by Heather. Nancy found it in the trash can. Um, it's got a weird sticky note. Something is definitely inside. And it's got this weird sticky note on it. Okay. She also found in the trash can these three seed packets. So, um, why don't we go ahead and look at those seed packets real quick. All right, let's look at the front of them first. All right, so this is the front of the seed packets. If you look closely, there's some amazing puns on these packets. Peas be mine. I'm one in a melon. <laughs> I don't care at all. <laughs> that is too funny. Uh... That is too funny. Okay, let's look at the back. We gotta look at the back. All right, so we're looking at Danvers Carrot, Swiss Giant Snow Pea, a Sugar Bell Watermelon. Okay, I don't know what the significance of this would be. Why, why would someone take this from the gift shop and throw it away unless someone hid something on the inside packet and they're working together? Interesting. Okay. Make sure to water frequently in order to properly germinate carrot square. So this is just showing, I guess, where, like, the zone that you can, where you can plant, and just information about it, so... Okay. Um... Let's go ahead and look at the sticky note as well. Um, June through July height, February through March days to germinate... Oh my gosh, that has to do with the seed packets, you guys. Let me put that back up there. <gasps> oh my gosh, yes, that's the code. That's the code. Because it's a three digit code on here, on the lock. Oh my gosh. All right, so June through July, we're looking for the polka dots, which would be the carrots, right? That's what I'm seeing right now is the carrots. So the height for the carrots in June through the July, height, height, height is six. Yeah, six. Um, oh, maybe I can remember it. All right, February through March is days to germination. Um, which one has February and March? Just this one. Days to germination. Eight, okay, six, eight. Um, June through the July planting depth. I'm assuming it's this one. Planting depth. Where is that at? One, six, eight, one. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's it. If that is it, <gasps> okay. Hold on, let me see. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this properly, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm gonna move my mic over here. I'm gonna see if I've I've, I've never done I've never done this before. Let's see if I can if I can get is that gonna work? Is it gonna is it gonna focus? Hold on, it's trying to focus. There it goes. Now stay focused. Okay. Here we go. So we're gonna do six eight one. Six. No, no, one. Did it work? Oh my gosh, it worked! That was it, you guys! We did it! <laughs> we did it! Alright, I'm gonna put
put that away. All right, are you guys ready to see what's in the tin box? <gasps> no! It's a bunch of ripped up letter! Oh my gosh! Okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna try and freak out too much. Okay, okay, okay. <gasps> no, look! It's a ring! And it's got, uh, three flowers on it? Looks like three roses. Yeah, three roses. If it'll... I don't know if it'll focus or not. I'm gonna need some workspace. I know, what do I do? Uh, okay, let me put the ring over here to this side. Am I gonna... Oh my word. Am I gonna be able to even... fit all of this? Okay. This is literally just like a Nancy Drew puzzle. Oh, 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 it's so exciting. Okay. That one goes there. And there's only one piece left. This one goes there. Okay. Woo! I show you on camera now. What the what? We did it! <laughs> we did one of them. But the other one looks better. Okay. Let me see if I can try and read this now. Because... This is, this looks hard to read. Okay. I'm gonna have to get up for this. Okay. I'll figure this cut on my own. Can't show anyone what I'm doing. Swiped some research notes. 
that shows... No, that should help me out. Okay, so whoever wrote this note, they stole them. They stole them. Latest readings on tomato samples. 300 milligrams of solanine per leaf. 4 milligrams per gram in the fruit. The fruit is way less dangerous. Better use the leaf. Ooh. So whoever was making these poison notes knew that the fruit was less potent than the leaf. And so they chose to use the leaf to poison Florence. This is an interesting development because that possibly could mean that Dr. Tara Latour did it because she's the one that actually does the lab sciencey stuff. Could be. Oh, good point too. It could be Oliver. That's also a good point, Amy. He does know about all the plants. It's very true. All right, let's keep reading. What's the right amount? Just need... Just need her out of commission for a few months. Sherwood once told me he's so much more sensitive to solanine than a regular person that he can't touch any of the samples in the lab without gloves. Skin-to-skin -skin contact with re regular tomatoes gives him a rash, but touching one of the samples in the lab would send him to the hospital for weeks. I bet he knows all about solanine wonder if I could ask and say it's for research. Ooh, okay. So here's the deal. If the poisoner really did write this note, and he's like, I wonder if I could ask um, Dr. Sherwood and tell him it's for research, then that's a pretty good indication that Dr. Sherwood probably didn't do it. Hmm, okay. No, still a bad idea to get him in on this. Need to figure out it myself. Ah, oh, so it wasn't Dr. Sherwood. Oh my gosh! We just eliminated one of the, the, the suspects. Okay, hold on. I'm getting my notebook. can't be Dr. Sherwood. Okay, let's keep going. Just wasted a bunch of time trying to look through old lab reports for the answer when I could have just looked it up online instead. Here's what the internet told me. 300 milligrams is enough to make pretty much anyone feel terrible. Anything above 3 milligrams per kilo of body weight is dangerous. Potential fatality there. Florence's weight. Around 70 kilograms? Question mark, question mark. Better to underestimate. I'll say 60. 2 milligrams per kilogram at 60 kilograms is 120 milligrams per day. Tea consists of 30 servings of tea. She just drinks one cup per day, I hope. 30 times 120 equals 3,600. 3,600 times 300 milligrams of solanine per leaf equals 12. Need to grind up 12 leaves. Mix them in loose, loose leaf. Remember, the right edge of, I don't know what that says, the right edge of zero over the center of X, if that rings a bell. Hmm, what, what, what could that possibly mean? Remember, remember the right edge of zero over the center of X, if that rings a bell. Okay. I'm coming back with my headphones. So there's a lot of interesting things we found out here. I feel like, so Dr. Sherwood definitely didn't do it because even the poisoner wrote down that they didn't want to get him involved. So it can be Dr. Sherwood. Hmm. But the interesting things that we learned Let's see, what else, what else was it? What's the right amount? Let us see. Hmm. This is all very interesting. 
all very interesting. Okay. Well. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I've been kind of behind on the chat. Let me take a picture of this before I get rid of the note. Just so we have, we can come back and reference it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take this note now and put it away. Okay. Sorry, hey everyone, welcome, welcome to Mystery Night. So glad you guys have decided to join us today. Um, this has been really fun. We still have lots of documents to look at as well. Some interesting things that I think will tell us about some things. Um, so why don't we do that? Oh, and also too, I forgot. We found this ring. This ring was in the tin box. We don't know what it means yet. If it'll, I don't know if it's gonna focus though. Mm, it's just a ring that has three roses on it. Which is interesting. Like, who could that belong to, you know? So. You know what? I really... What I need to do is I need to maybe see if Nancy wrote down any of her phone numbers. Maybe if she wrote down a phone number, I could call a friend and they could kind of give us like a hint or some direction on what we should be doing. Hmm. Well, maybe there's, maybe there's something. Hold on. Let me, let, let's see. Hold on. Oh, okay. There's something I maybe have missed. It's a sticky note. Call 1555 Mystico and prepare to be amazed. That's odd. Should we call the number? Why not? Let's give it a try. Got my cell phone here. 1555 Mystico. Who dares disturb the concentration of Mystico the Magnificent? Uh, hi. Uh, this is Carter. I'm here with a lot of other detectives. We're here trying to solve this case because Nancy Drew is sick. And anyways, I, I just need some help on just the case. And I thought I'd give you a call. I see your future clear as tape. You do? Oh, that's amazing, and then maybe you can help us solve the case. I mean, that's so cool that you can see the future, Mystico. The Magnificent. Huh? You're supposed to say Mystico the Magnificent. Oh, oh, right. Uh, Mystico the Magnificent. What secrets from the beyond do you seek? Um, I, I guess a hint, maybe? Ach, who do you think I am? A gun-toting thug, a washed-up actor, an antique stealer, a diamond thief, an old man, an art aficionado, a hillbilly, an art director, a whale lover, a flannel-wearing cuisinier, a sneeveling brat, a quack, a social climber, a flannel, a two-headed monster? You have incurred the wrath of Mystico. From this moment forward, bad luck shall creep behind you like a malevolent shadow. Mystical has spoken. Okay. Never mind. Anyways, okay. So, maybe we won't call any friends. That's okay. That's okay. Alright, so, let's look at a little of the other things that... Nancy has sent us, okay? I know there's some other things that she sent us in here. We can always come back to this letter in just a few. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I know. That Mystico guy, I'm telling you. Like, what? I just wanted a hint. Is that so hard? Is that so hard? Okay. Um. What else should we look at? internship form yeah why don't we look at the internship form that was another thing that nancy included from in her evidence let's see here okay ah 
Well, what do we have here? The River Heights University Scientific Internship Program. So this form is to be filled out midway through the long year program by a supervisor. So this must be about Parker. Hmm, let's see what we got. Name of intern, Parker, knew it. Name of supervisor, Florence. Name of organization, Magnolia Gardens. Okay. Identify any areas of excellence or significant achievements the student has made. Parker is an intelligent young man with a genuine passion for plant biology. He's proven time and time again to be quick-witted and he shows a genuine aptitude for biochemistry. He is quick to think of creative solutions to any problems that might arise. Identify any areas where improvement in performance is needed. Ooh, here we go. This is getting juicy. Dr. Latour, who works most closely with Parker, has reported to me that Parker often incorrectly fills out lab reports, consistently makes easily preventable errors in those same reports, and repeatedly talks to a Oh, repeatedly fails to observe basic lab safety protocols despite numerous warnings. All of these issues stem from Parker's failure to double check his work before submitting it, and they have led to Parker making numerous preventable lab errors. While Parker is certainly not the only reason that Dr. Latour's research has fallen behind schedule, I consider his negligence to be one of the primary factors. He unfortunately seems to have been more of a hindrance than a help to her so far. Oh... If this doesn't scream motive, I don't know what does. This just gives him all the means, right? To poison Florence. Include any additional comments here. Or it could be... No, no, we can't do that. If Because it said if there's any reason why a, why a person doesn't have motive, you just automatically cross them out. And since Dr. Sherwood wasn't included in the poisoner's notes, it just can't be him. I was going to say maybe Dr. Sherwood because Parker was like disgruntled and he got all this bad notes and stuff, but no, it could just be Parker. When my colleague Dr. Sanderson recommended Parker for this position, he repeatedly emphasized to me how intelligent Parker is and how much potential he has to become a skilled researcher, and I agree with Dr. Sanderson on both of these fronts. However, Parker has shown an inability to take direction multiple times. Dr. Latour and I have discussed with Parker the issues mentioned in the previous section, and he has made no significant effort to alter his behavior. Instead of taking this program as an opportunity to live up to the promise he has shown, Parker has instead been wasting his considerable potential. Despite Dr. Latour being engrossed with the preparation of an upcoming lecture, she has felt the need to delegate less responsibility to Parker for fear that he will do more harm in her absence. Ooh. Although Parker is only halfway through the program at this point, I'm afraid I have no hope that he will reflect on his actions and prove himself to be a worthwhile member of the team. While I'm sure Dr. Sanderson would love to see Parker get a junior research position upon graduation, I personally do not intend to hire Parker once his internship concludes. And look, he signed it too. So they both had to like talk about this. Oh, I feel like it could be Parker. It could be. It could be. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, let's write that down, because that, that, that adds to his motive. Parker got a bad review. So we're going to cross out Dr. Sherwood. Hmm. This is getting just rich, you guys. This is rich. Okay. Another thing that Nancy said that she had taken was uh, the Fatal Flora brochure. So why don't we take a look at that? That's the Fatal Flora brochure. Welcome to Fatal Flora. In this exhibit, you'll find a wide variety of plants from all over the world, each as dangerous as it is beautiful. Feel free to explore and take photos. Our Magnolia Garden staff is here to answer any questions you may have. However, please refrain from touching any of the plants housed in this exhibit. Remember, it's not safe to touch or ingest any plant you're not familiar with. Below are a few facts about some of the curator's personal favorites from the Fatal Flora collection. Hmm. Okay, so this is the whole total brochure. The inside, at least. And Nancy has written on the sides here for us. She starts some things, so... 
let me see here. I'll make this a little bit bigger. So it looks like Nancy put on here that there were some stolen cuttings here from the oleander azalea cuttings stolen from this plant. Bleeding heart. I've seen this plant before somewhere else. Lily of the Valley. I think I recognize this plant too. Wolf's Bane. Cuttings also stolen. Hmm. So I wonder, I wonder if these cuttings were stolen, if they were used to make solanine, or if solanine is its own compound. It says it contains dangerous alcohols. When consumed, this plant causes tremors, drooling, rash, difficulty breathing, and even seizures. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember Florence told us? She told us in... The case file, what her symptoms were. Let's go check out Nancy's case file one more time. Yeah, look. So Florence had a throbbing headache, dilated pupils. She also had a rash on her arms, an irregular heartbeat, and a vivid nightmare. Okay, let's go back to the brochure, because it's got to mean something. It's got to. So this doesn't say anything about... It says irregular heartbeat and seizures, frothy. That doesn't sound like it. Oh. <gasps> this is it. This is it. Causes dilated pupils, headaches, rashes, irregular heartbeat, nightmares, and potentially death. Many harmless plants like tomatoes, yes, and potatoes are related to nightshade and contain small amounts of the same dangerous chemicals. Nightshade contains solanine. Oh my gosh. We know what the poisoner used. It was deadly nightshade. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me write that down. Deadly nightshade. Okay. I just can't believe that, you guys. Deadly Nightshade, that's what it was. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's also take a look at the actual Magnolia Garden map because I feel like that's really important to understanding how everything flowed. So there's the main building. This is the administrative building, okay. So look, this is Florence's office right over here to the right. This is the office that she left unlocked. We also have Tara and Dr. Sherwood's office right across from it. And then this is the lab space. Tara and Parker work here. Hmm. Oliver spends most of his time in the greenhouse right over down here. And, and, what, and what is it over here that they're saying at this top part? Let's see. Let's look at the main building a little closer. The reception was held here. Tara had her talk here. Heather's office. Hmm. Okay. It's all very interesting. And then there's one other thing that Nancy wrote here at the top. Let's see what she said. Closed indefinitely. Found the notebook here. Really? So at a place that's supposed to be off limits, someone left behind their notebook. That is a very interesting development. And now we need to look at the notebook. I think this is the back of the map, but this is just, um, maybe something. Let's see. 
So rainforest fatal, oh, fatal flora. So this is what was in the fatal flora exhibit, I suppose? Yeah, see, fatal flora. And we have deadly nightshade. Maybe I should write down the scientific name as well. Courtney said, have we read the notebook yet? No, I don't think we have. Okay, so that's what we'll do next then. It sounds like that's what we should do next. Atropa belladonna? Just in case we need to see that there. All right, let's collapse this down a little bit. And let's go look at the notebook. Oh my gosh. Like who would have who would have left their notebook at a place that's off limits? Hmm. So this is the random notebook page that Nancy found at the um, building that's supposed to be closed indefinitely. This page is from the notebook found in the supposedly abandoned greenhouse. Seems to cover this past week. Good point. Yeah, it makes some kind of list. Sunday, Lawrence, Rolf, 151, 4975. Monday, SK, 583. Hmm. Looks like someone was making... Wednesday. I know it's a successful business model. Florence will totally have to say yes once she sees how much money... Lara has made for the gardens. Oh, do you think? Do you think that it's possible that maybe this could be Heather's notebook, possibly? Remember when we were reading about Heather's suspect uh, case file? It was saying that she really wanted to always suggest ways they could make Magnolia Gardens better. This sounds like that could be her notebook. sounds like it hmm yeah that's what I'm thinking too Courtney this is from Heather so Courtney so Heather was at the abandoned greenhouse had a notebook covering this week of different cells made to see how much money Lara has made for the gardens interesting <laughs> yeah, Tori, there is a lot of upper and lower case in this, isn't there? <laughs> okay. So, more interesting things. We now know it was Heather that was at the abandoned greenhouse. We now know that Dr. Sherwood is not the culprit. We also know that Deadly Nightshade was used for the poison. I feel like we're getting close. <laughs> we just haven't figured out what the ring means. We have the other note we have to do. And let's make sure there's nothing else I've missed from Nancy. Mm. Oh yeah, break room checklist. I forgot. Yeah. So this was a checklist that Nancy borrowed from the break room. Let's see if it has anything worth looking at here. So the first one just like some chores, like clean the fridge, take out the trash. Just if I can make it bigger, a little bit bigger. Hey, didn't we agree the break room was an allergy free zone? I got an unpleasant flare up from the tomato spill left in the microwave. Assuming it was you for obvious reasons, Tara. Oh. So Tara's been working with tomatoes. Another reason why Sherwood probably could not have been the culprit. He's too allergic to it. Apologies. I was busy with the fatal flora lecture yesterday. Must have slipped my mind. Maybe you'd understand what it's like to have to multitask if you'd been promoted. Oh. oh. <gasps> well, uh, well, well, well. 
For the record, though, it was regular tomato soup, nothing from the lab. Hmm. Huh. I want to lean more towards Tara and Parker because they have access to the lab. <sighs> okay. I might not be nearly as busy as you are trying to salvage that project of yours, but I find ways to occupy my time. Next time, bring clam chowder. Like from Danger and Deception Island. <laughs> and then Oliver says, Hi all, the microwave is clean now. How about we let bygones be bygones? Great talk yesterday, Tara, by the way. Perfect opening for a fantastically curated exhibit. Ooh, this is just... This is just interesting. I don't know, you guys. Okay. Some other things I feel like we learned. Tara's working really closely with tomatoes, but Parker also has access to the lab, so there's that. Hmm. Okay. I think there's only two more documents we have not seen. <gasps> oh my gosh, yes! Courtney, that's such a good idea! Okay, let me put it back up there. Uh, where was that at? That was the, uh, break room checklist? Yes, match. The handwriting. Oh, that is... You're so right. Okay, let me make this bigger. Because remember, we have two notes. Okay, does this look like... Does that not look like, uh, this, the middle? Does that look like Tara's handwriting? Focus on my note. There it is. Does, that looks just like Tara's handwriting. I think... I think you are totally onto something, Courtney. Now. Now, now, now. That letter that I just showed you guys, that was the other letter that we haven't put together. This is the uh, this is the poisoner's letter. Which doesn't match either of them, right? Or does it? <gasps> no. Do you know who it looks like it matches? Oh my gosh, do you know who it looks like it matches? Kind of? Nah, hers is too neat. It's too neat. But it kind of looks like it does. Especially with the Y's and stuff. No, I don't think her handwriting is as neat as this one. This one looks a little bit more messy. Hmm. Well, if that was the case, then it really, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Dr. Latour, Dr. Tara, or Dr. Sherwood. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Her motive is just really weak. Okay. Let's look at the last two documents that we haven't seen yet. Um, okay, there's the postcard and the flower bouquet. So, this is the postcard that Nancy found. It says, greetings from Magnolia Gardens. Or, she didn't find it. Florence found it. When Florence returned back to her office, she found this postcard at the um, front of her door. She also found a flower bouquet. The flower bouquet, Nancy took a sketch of it, and this is it. I don't know, do you think that matches any of the other flora we saw on the brochure? Maybe, hold on, let's put this one up. Let me just kind of size this over here. Does any of that match at all? I don't think so, yeah? I don't think any of it matches. <gasps> no, you guys. Do you think the flower bouquet was left by Oliver? Remember Oliver was going back to basically go talk to her. That's her love interest. So maybe the bouquet was from Oliver, which actually would make sense. That would make sense if maybe... 
Because he went to the greenhouse, remember? Wolfbane? Yes, the postcard does have a back. Okay, let's look at the back. Let's look at it. Okay. Oh, maybe, okay. I know you made yourself clear, but please reconsider. If you connect the dots, you'll see where I stand. <gasps> so this is really from Oliver then. This is Oliver giving something to Florence. Oh my goodness. But what does this mean? Connect the dots and you'll understand. Hmm. And connect the dots in... What way? So Liv is saying, use the list of colored dots to connect different colored flowers on the drawing of the bouquet. Like straight up draw on this and connect them? Will that really give me an image? <laughs> for reals, for reals. And the first one is blue, yellow, purple, pink. Oh, it, oh, oh, I see it now. Okay, I see, I see where you're going. That was kind of hard for me to grasp, but I see where you're going. <laughs> so basically, if you're, if you're going off the order of this, it's going to spell something out. So like, for, to go from blue to yellow to purple to pink, it makes a P. I don't know. P. Here, you know what? what are the other ones going to be like, not so bad? Blue, yellow... Purple, pink, orange. That was an R. Purple. Purple to the pink. To the white. Purple to the pink, to the white, to the blue. To the oh, that repeats, so it's another vowel. That was the same one. This one is red to yellow, so red to yellow, to blue, to purple. That was an N, wasn't it? Hmm. Oh, it was an E. Perrin. I literally did not get an E out of that. How did you all get an E out of that? Let's see, purple to pink. Oh, oh, because the E, ah, so you're, oh, okay, this was like the E, it, it had to be abstract, oh my word, okay, and then red, same one, it's another N, perennial, it says perennial, I know that's what it says, purple, it's blue. Yeah. Red. It's purple. It's orange. What's pink to white? Pink. What is that? Pink to white? Uh, purple to blue to orange. Perennial. Yes, that's how they used to say I love you. So basically he's saying I love you to Florence still. Oh my goodness. So what is, is this one supposed to be anything significant? Per, pink to pink to white. Just a dash. Okay. Oh man. Okay. First of all, that was a really cool puzzle, and I super duper duper appreciate the help because the abstractness was <laughs> not was not clicking with my brain oh man okay ooh, ooh, ooh. so yes that's exactly what i was gonna say mckenzie if he's still sending love notes with flowers to florence there's n there's no motive there that he would poison her which means that 
we have marked out that it wasn't Dr. Sherwood, and now it's not Oliver. So now it's just between Tara, Parker, and Heather. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, you probably could. Uh, you should see, like, after streaming for a while, my ears will have, like, that uh, shape, like, of the headphones. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Is there anything else that we haven't looked at that Nancy sent us? <gasps> yes, there is. There's one more thing that we haven't looked at. And then we should start trying to piece things together, you guys. Um, it's this random fax. Okay, so Nancy stole this fax. I'm sorry, she borrowed this fax. Let's read it. This is to Terra Latour Magnolia Gardens. Okay. Dear Dr. Latour, thank you again for video conferencing me this evening to go over collaboration and funding opportunity with the Tom Swift Company. I understand that you were quite occupied with giving a lecture this evening. I very much appreciate you choosing to miss the reception in order to speak with me for the past 45 minutes. Your research on the water efficiency of genetically modified tomatoes oh, is both creative and pioneering. However, as we discussed, your progress has not yet been sufficient enough to warrant an external grant. The current strain of tomato you've produced is frankly unfit for sale with only a marginal difference in water retention. While we appreciate the passion you clearly have for the project and understand your need for financial assistance, we will not be able to provide funding at this time. I wish you the best of luck on your continued research and suggest you resubmit an application once you've attained more desirable results. This is very telling. Okay. If she was busy doing this, this was sent at 847. Hmm. Choosing to miss the reception. Let me go back and let's see... Uh... I wanted to read on her a little bit more. What did what did it say? What time did she say? Tara left as soon as she was finished speaking at 8 o'clock. When I asked her why, she said it was because she didn't like to mingle and because she had some work to complete in her office. When she got to her office, Tara could hear Sherwood's music playing through their shared wall. She said that it turned off at some point before she left, but she couldn't exactly say when. When she was in her office, Tara saw Oliver through her window. He was moving around in the greenhouse from 8 around. Yeah, that was him getting the flowers together. She left the night around nine o'clock. Tara said Florence showed up at the event late and then Oliver left the lecture a few minutes before she was done speaking. Tara mentioned with more than a little annoyance that Heather was her only colleague who stayed for the entirety of the lecture. Hmm. So Tara was there, or I mean, Heather was there the entire time she lectured. Interesting. So Courtney says, I feel like I feel like Parker has the best motive. Dr. Sherwood was in the running behind Florence to be the director, and Florence isn't willing to hire on Parker after his internship. Yeah, I agree. I think so far he has the more obvious motive to poison Florence. And also, too, because if he's working in the lab with um, Dr. Latour then I feel like that's all the more reason, right? That he would know about her research on tomatoes and want to be able to um, use that for his advantage. In the note that we did, did it say Dr. Sherwood or did it just say Sherwood? No, it just said Sherwood. Hmm, that also makes me feel like, cause like, doesn't he, he doesn't respond to him as Dr. Sherwood. It says, please recycle. She followed instructions. <laughs> Nancy did follow instructions. Hmm. 
Okay. Oh, and there's a back to the facts as well. Let's see what the back says. Divide the data out into the number of roses on the ring. Oh, that's the ring that I didn't know what we were going to do with. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Okay, let me stick it over here to the side. <laughs> okay. All right, so the ring that we found from earlier has three roses on it. If you could see, but you can't because it won't focus. But you guys get the idea. There's three roses on this ring. And it says divide the data out into the number of roses on the ring. So does that mean that every three or something, we have to take every three letters? Where's that fax at? <laughs> okay. Divide the data into the number of roses on the ring. Divide the data into the number of roses on the ring. There's three roses on the ring. And there's all this umble jumble bumble. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go through and like literally divide just the first three letters and see if that maybe, maybe that makes something. If not, maybe it's a code. Okay, it did perfectly divide all of the sections into into a group of three. <laughs> my brain, my brain's not either. Although we should somehow be somewhat prepared, seeing as if we've been doing codes for the last, <laughs> seeing as we've done codes for the last mm, forever, four months, five months. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. A part of it... A part of it looks like it could be something else. Mm -mm. But yeah, how would you know? Or is it every third letter does something? That it could be that too. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, three, one, two. Two. That says two, but I don't know if that's supposed to mean anything. Hmm. How did you divide it? So I divided it into like sections of three. Oh. Yeah. I divided it into sections of three. Because I assume that's what we would do, right? If it's saying, uh, divide the data out into the number of roses on the ring. And there's three roses. Yeah, three roses. One, two, three. Hmm. Yeah. My, so, I know that we divide it like that, but it's a matter of how do we take the, div the divided data and make it into what is supposed to, I guess, what we're supposed to read. Hmm. 
unless... Oh, do you think... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Do you think it's possible that we would take... Like, we would take the first letter from the first group and then put it with the first letter of the second group and the first letter of the third group and so on and so on until it forms, like, this whole sentence? Maybe? Let's try. We can just at least try. C O U. Oh, you guys, I think that's it. I think that's how we did it. I think that's how we do it. Because so far, it says could. So you see how the C and the I and the H are all caps? So if you take the first C and you put it with the first O and you put it with the first U, it's the first letter of each uh, division. It forms the first sentence. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, so could. N. O. Could not. F. I. N. D. N. E. O. F. M. Y. F. Could not find one of my F. Hmm, the ending is kind of interesting. Because you see how the interesting has, I mean, the ending has, like, spaced out? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, let's keep going. I. K. N. O. W. I, I know it, W, A, S, O, was, on, Could not find one of my FTC. I know it was on my desk. O O I S. It's like the ending is like not finished or something. Hmm. Okay, one more line. H A has. Has some. Oh, has some on E B What? Oh my gosh. This is what I got, but it doesn't make any sense. Has some on... Has someone been in my... Oh! Wait, I must have messed that up. Has someone been... Has someone... Been in my... That has to say office. Okay, so the ending was, has someone been in my, 
but we have all these extra letters over here and that looks like it could spell out like office maybe could not find one of my blank I know it was on my desk blank has someone been in my office hmm Okay. That would, wait. These puzzles are so clever. I know, they really are. Tori said, that would make the other words notes, right? M-Y-K-Y-O-N-F-O-F-T-I-E-C-S-E. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doesn't that... No, I don't think so. I was going to say, doesn't... um. In the random notebook page, wasn't there... Hold on, let me take that off. SK... L oh, okay. I just saw a bunch of abbreviations and I thought, oh, maybe that's the abbreviations that were on here. But I don't, it doesn't look like it is, so. So I wonder, are, you, are we having to do those differently? My, M, Y. Were they really? So why, I wonder why. Oh, do you still divide it by three even if there's a space there? Is that why that helped? Was that why I was doing that wrong? that's what it is you have to count the space too so I couldn't find one of my so then it would be one couldn't find one of my notes couldn't find one of my notes that's the case then it would be desk space 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 space, space, space. has someone been in my oh i see because on the on the second on the second sentence i know it was on my desk that's the end of it there's no more that's why it's spaced out she spaced it, or he spaced it, because there's nothing left in the sentence. Oh, that makes so much sense. Is that what you said, Tori? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, you're right, it is, it says notes. And then, has someone been in my, that has to say office. Yeah. Yes, that was it, it's office. Okay, if that's the case then, If that's the case then, who would have written that? Could not find one of my notes. I know it was on my desk. Has someone been in my office? So either that is Florence saying has someone been in my... No, this fax was to Dr. Tara Latour. So probably would be Dr. Tara. She was writing that, right? Which means her note was stolen. OK, 
Okay, so that means... Oh, that's right. I forgot we still have... Yes, Courtney. We still have that other one last note, and that's the last part. It's the last section. Um, to solving the case. That's literally our last thing. We did it! Oh, nothing like a good determination and powering through a puzzle. Okay, let me see if I can read this. I have to kind of stand up so I can see it all because it's so tiny. Okay, it says... Okay. It says, objective. Cultivate a water-efficient strain of tomatoes by reducing... Um, their required water consumption by 15% without significantly altering taste or quality. Result of trial 1.8. Slight decrease in under... No, slight decrease in water needs from last gen. Solanine levels are high at 300 milligrams per leaf. Ooh and only four milligrams in the fruit, significantly above the threshold for safe consumption. Eating the fruit or leaves of even one tomato is enough to cause severe illness symptoms comparable to nightshade poisoning. Ho, 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 Hey, it's comparable to nightshade poisoning. In addition to regular tomato, uh, the heat and oils of bare skin seem to cause a chemical reaction with sugars of the leaves. This causes the fruit and leaves, when handled without gloves, to emit a sticky pink substance that requires an acid wash to remove from skin, but does not come out of clothes. Interesting. Okay. Some samples have been lost due to poor temperature regulation and others avoidable mishaps. Oh, and this is where it gets real juicy. Okay. F isn't happy. So Florence. Florence isn't happy with the progress. I mean, neither am I, but she'll cut funding for this. What, a, what then? An external grant? Check if the application is still open. So I'm assuming she means the grant. Would Florence put in a good word? No way. Why couldn't Sherwood have gotten the director position? Dealing with this blatant nepotism would be a worthwhile trade to get Florence off my back. At least he'd give me more time to... What does that say? Course to course correct? Oh my goodness. I feel like... We just learned so much. Ah. 
Let me let me take a photo of this first so I don't lose it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that you guys could still see my uh, my feet. <laughs> yes, I was happy dancing. Uh, because it's so exciting. Oh my gosh, we are literally so close. Liv said, I wonder how they produce torn up notes in bulk. I don't even know. I'm sure a machine probably cuts it, right? Like they like print them out and the machine goes like a pattern. Hmm. It makes me curious. I want to know now. Okay, you guys. So here's now what we know. Tara, Tara's writing a note about how much better it would be if, if Florence wasn't the director. It's between, it's gotta be between, it's gotta be between Tara and Parker. Like it has to be. The game says if there's any, if any of them don't have um, the means to do it, the motive to do it, or the opportunity to do it, then they can't be the culprit. So if just one of those doesn't match up, then they cannot be the culprit. And I just, to remember correctly, like I know, where is Parker's stuff? Yeah. Just to go back to Parker, Parker says that at 7.40, Parker took some snacks from the table at the back of the room and went back to the lab. He knew that Sherwood must not be done with his work yet since he could still hear music playing from Sherwood's office and he couldn't go home. So Parker said he occupied his time by getting a little extra internship related work done. Wait a minute. Let's wait a minute. Another thing. Another thing I just remembered. Where's my pencil so I can feel extra detective-y? Another thing I just remembered. There's so much evidence that Parker is a messy lab person, right? And there's been pink stains everywhere. Everywhere. I feel like that could be very indicative that it was him. Because if it was Dr. Tara Latour, she wouldn't have made a bunch of mess everywhere. She is the whole scientist there. Now, she definitely, of course, looks really bad with what she had been writing in her notes, like her motive looks really strong, but that, I feel like, gives more reason that it could be Parker. Remind me, was it determined the dosage was done incorrectly? Um, I think in the letter, actually, they didn't know how much Florence weighed, so they instead of doing 70 kilograms, they did 60 kilograms. They just undershot, basically. I think that's what I understood from the letter. They also didn't know how much tea uh, Florence drank. Yeah. She was just like venting out loud. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, it says three. Oh, I see what you're saying, Tori. Yeah, in Dr. Tara's notes, it says 300 milligrams a leaf. In the other note, uh, yeah, 300 milligrams. So it was correct, and and I could I could see it being correct because everyone has said Parker is really intelligent, and very smart. So it was it was done correctly. Hmm. And let let me go back and read about Dr. Tara Latour as well. Hmm. Yeah, Tara told Parker to clean up the samples he dropped. Oh, that's right. Remember Parker had let Oh, that's right. I forgot. Didn't he like carry something? 
He somehow managed to trip while carrying my most promising samples, making a huge mess for both of us. Both Sandersons are as clumsy as our intelligent of lab safety protocols. Tara told Parker to clean up the samples he dropped. Then she left the administration of building. She arrived at the fatal floor. Maybe, oh, well that could actually be why there was pink stuff everywhere, if that's what it was. Tara left as soon as she was finished speaking at 8 o'clock. I'm not sure why. Also, the only other thing I was going to say that could be in favor that Dr. Latour didn't do it, and you guys, you guys tell me a little bit if I'm understanding this correctly. This fax that was sent to Dr. Latour was sent at 8.47 p.m. Okay? When... No, this one... When she left, she left around 9 o'clock. So that was right before she left. The fax is saying... I understand that you are quite occupied with giving a lecture this evening. I very much appreciate you choosing to miss the reception in order to speak me with me for the past 45 minutes. So did she miss the reception? Back to Nancy's case file. The opening reception event began at 6.45. From 7 to 8, Dr. Latour was scheduled to deliver a lecture. And then going back to Dr. Latour... Of course, he would make me run late for my own lecture. Tara planned to show up to the exhibit early, but Parker made a mistake in the lab that set her back. Well, if she was going to be there early for the lecture, that means that she would have been there for the reception. She arrived at Fatal Floor exhibit around 6.55, so she actually did show up for the reception. She was there. It was 6.55. The reception started at 6.45. So, that fact, when did she finish? Tara left as soon as she was finished speaking at 8 o'clock. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If that's the case, if this was sent at 847, then doesn't that mean that Dr. Tara, doesn't that mean that she was on a video conference for 45 minutes, for the past 45 minutes? 45 minutes from 847 would have been 8 o'clock. She may have finished speaking, immediately went to her office, did this video conference, and they faxed that over to her. Hmm. Yeah. And Florence was poisoned during the reception? Um, let's go back to Nancy's case file, because I think it specifies, Florence says, <laughs> oh wait, no, maybe it's on her uh, suspect thing. Yeah. She drinks a cup of tea in her office every morning at 9 a.m. She, she started to feel sick around 5 p.m. the day after the Fatal Flora exhibit opened. Yeah. Because her tea would have been poisoned while she was out of office. I just, that's my thing is like, I'm like, well, I would lean more towards Parker because because that to me feels like that she, that to me feels like she was on a video conference call 
begging for funds for her project. She was venting about how she wasn't going to get funds for her project, yada yada. I will say the sloppiness of it all vibes more with Parker. I know. I know that's the thing is that I think so too. And I want it to be Parker. And it makes more like just more sense that he would just he had pink stuff everywhere. Now, Parker, he had the opportunity, right? See, <laughs> Liv is like, I know how Squid feels all the time now. That NDA, though. Because, <laughs> see, like, here's my thing, though. Okay, hear me out, though, about Parker. It's saying in his case file, right? Like, I don't get why I have to clean this up. You know, it's honestly just a matter of time before Florence shuts it down. I feel like his aggression is more towards... Um, uh, it's more towards Dr. Tara than it is with, with Florence. Goobin Jetpack is raiding with a party of five. What to do? How you do? Goobin Jetpack. Hello. Welcome to Mystery Night. What's up? Um. Goodness gracious. Courtney said, as the tea bag she grabbed in the morning already poisoned, or did someone sneak in and poison her already made cup of tea later on? No, it seems like to me that they poisoned her tea while she went to the event. That's why the, her tea bag has that pink stain on it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Gubin Jetpack. You have a great day or night. So it's got to be one of those two. To the Terror or Parker. I feel like they have the reason. They both have the opportunity. Yes, that's what it is. Because we have to eliminate one of the things. Means, motive, opportunity. They have to have all three. They both have a reason why. Because Florence gave a really bad review on Parker. With Tara, it's the funding, right? The opportunity, Dr. Tara knows how to make things. She's a scientist. Parker has access to Tara's notes, but it's the opportunity. That's where I feel like that's the gap because Parker had the opportunity because he was literally in the lab during the time that apparently someone could have gone to the office. But Tara only had the window of time because like, she let she arrived at the she arrived at the event at 6 55 even in the evening she left the event at 8 after she finished speaking but she immediately was on a video conference call according to the timestamp of the facts she received here i'll throw the facts back up there yeah 8 47 the facts was sent Yep. For the past 45 minutes. Oh, Liv's got a question for us. Is it something we have we have is there something we haven't thought about? I know we're all kind of leaning towards Parker. That's true. That is a very good point. <laughs> That's a many questions. <sighs> if Tara is the culprit, then who stole her note? Very good point. That's just all the more reason to believe it's Parker. And I really don't think that it could be 
Tara because I think she didn't have the opportunity to do it. She was the one that lectured. She didn't go to the, what was it called? The, uh, Nancy's case file. It says on the night of the poisoning, it says uh, from seven to eight, Dr. Latour was scheduled to deliver a lecture on the chemical properties of some of the poisons. A post-lecture reception was held from eight to 8.30. Yes, that's it. That's gotta be it. Because again, going back to the facts at 8.47, I understand that you were quite occupied with giving a lecture this evening. I'm very much appreciative of you choosing to miss the reception in order to speak with me for the past 45 minutes. Yes, this is it. Yes. That is it. It has to be Parker. He has all three. He has opportunity, he has means. It just has to be. We didn't do we we didn't rule out Heather, did we? Or did we? She had means. No, because she was at the lecture the whole time, didn't it say that? Hold on, let me just make sure real quick before I Before I, before we move forward. After the talk, Heather spoke with several regular visitors to the garden, including a woman named Archie, before eventually leaving the building at around 8.10. Okay, yeah. It doesn't seem like to me that Heather even had the opportunity to do it. She looks like she was all up in the event. And Dr. Latour did say she was kind of begrudged a little bit that the only colleague that showed up for the entirety of the lecture was Heather. So, are we going to try this? Are we going to do it? This is it. I feel like it's Parker. I feel like it's Parker. <laughs> uh, I'm nervous. Oh my gosh, this is like, this is the most like nerve wracking thing. Oh man. <gasps> oh my gosh. Are you guys, are you, are you ready? Are you ready to read it? I'm so nervous. Oh. Is it going to be, uh, uh, I think I actually, I think I have this. Hold on. Am I ready? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to put in... Thank you so much for the cheers, Mackenzie. I'm going to put the letter up on the screen. I have yet to read it, but they email you a copy of the letter. I covered it. I never looked at it. I'm going to put it on the screen. This will be my first time reading it. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Here we go. Oh, wait, no. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the ending, ending letter. This is the actual real letter. Okay. Thanks to your analysis, we can make the following conclusions. Parker Sanderson is the culprit. Ah, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So it says he knew Florence wasn't going to hire him after his internship ended and that his uncle Sherwood had been the other choice for promotion to director. In Parker's mind, if Florence was out of the way, Sherwood would take her place and Sherwood likes Parker enough to hire him despite his poor performance. Parker poisoned Florence to secure a job at Magnolia Gardens under Dr. Sanderson. Parker had access to Dr. Terlator's genetically modified tomatoes in the lab. Yes, that's what we said. Those samples are full of the chemical solanine, which is also found in nightshade. That's why the poison's effects are were similar to the symptoms of nightshade poisoning. We can tell Parker used the samples because of the pink stains in Florence's office. Dr. Latour's notes says the sample leaves pink stains when handled without gloves. Tara had the same stains on her lab coat, which proves the connection between the stains in Florence's office and the tomatoes in the lab. The stains also prove Sherwood wasn't the culprit. Sherwood can't handle, we said this, we literally said this, Sherwood can't handle Tara's samples without gloves due to his severe allergy. We know the stain was created by a bare-handed culprit, so Sherwood is off the hook. Oliver Wheatley seems suspicious at first since Florence broke his heart, 
However, the coded message in the bouquet left on her office doorstep was perennial, a word that had a strong romantic significance to the two of them. Oliver was still in love with Florence, which suggests he didn't have a motive to poison her. Additionally, the ring inside the tin of the culprit's belong belongings was from River Heights Garden Society. Oliver doesn't belong to that club and therefore doesn't own that ring. Ooh, I didn't realize that when we were playing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much for the for the cheers and the bits and everything. Thank you guys. Uh, okay. Heather. Heather left a sales ledger in the old greenhouse. Deciphering it showed that Heather was stealing plant cuttings and selling them. Oh, she was the reason why cuttings were taken off the plants. But her motivations weren't selfish. The name of the donor, Lara H, is an anagram of Heather Shaw. I figured that's what that meant. Heather was donating her proceedings back to the botanical garden. She was going to reveal her sales to Florence to convince Florence to sell plants at the gift shop. That means that she didn't have any motive to poison Florence. The page also gives Heather an alibi. During the time, Florence's door was unlocked. Heather was busy at the opening and then making a sale in the greenhouse. She had no opportunity to poison the tea. Dr. Latour held had a strong motive, thinking Florence would uproot her research project. However, she had no opportunity to poison the tea either. On the night of the opening, Tara gave her lecture and went straight to a call with the Tom Swift Company in a desperate bid to secure funding that could save her research. She stayed on the call until after the door was locked again. When I visited Magnolia Gardens, I would have never guessed there were so many secrets buried just beneath the surface. I'm glad you could help me dig them up. As you can see from the article I've sent, I've passed our findings on to Florence, who, like me, has thankfully made a full recovery, and to the authorities. I hope we get to work together again someday, but let's hope the next time I won't have to get poisoned first. Your friend, Nancy Drew. Ah, you guys, what the what? We did it. <laughs> I can't believe it. We literally suspected Parker. Oh man, I'm so happy for us. I'm so, I'm so like proud that we did this. We did this thing. We did it. All right, you guys. Well, I sure do appreciate you joining me for Mystery Night. Um, I just have to say how amazing. Thank you to Lonnie for being a part of the beginning. That was amazing and literally fulfilled like a childhood dream part of me. Like I feel so complete. So that's a shout, shout out. Shout out to Hugh for helping me uh, with the music in the background. Um, this is his track. So thank you, Hugh. And thank you to everyone that joined because you guys helped solve the case and the mystery. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. This was really fun. I can't wait to do another like it. And um, real quick before we go, we are going to do a giveaway. We are going to do a giveaway. So what are we giving away? Well, we're going to give away one item from um, Sleuthy Styles Shop. I don't know if you guys have ever seen her stuff, but she has the best stuff. She makes enamel pins, she makes shirts, she makes journals, she makes really great stuff. And I wanted to give away one item for someone that stayed and helped on the stream. Even if you're lurking, if you still stayed on the stream, I want to give one thing away uh, from her store to someone that joined Mystery Night tonight in celebration of Mystery Month on Carter Plays. So this is how it's going to work. I unfortunately, because I had to get all of the content ready for this stream, like the all the brochures and all the things and all the things that pop on the screen, I didn't have time to make my wheel that I was going to make. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a website and I'm going to randomly uh, select a number and whatever number is closest to someone that puts it in the chat, that's who's going to win. The free item okay so here's what you got to do if you if, if you will in the in the comments of the stream if you will comment a number between one and a hundred that's all we need we just need between one and a hundred and we'll see who's the closest and i need to um Yeah, numbers, 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 numbers.
All right, we got our numbers in. Courtney says 77. Archmage Ren says 55. Tori says 66. K Kid says 17. Liv says 34. Hee hee hee. Mackenzie says 90. Okay. And I'm going to switch over to live so we can see this happening in real time. I just want to make sure that everybody has had a chance to put a number in. Even if you're lurking. Even if you're lurking. Okay, I think that's going to be everyone that's going to put a number in. Is there any more numbers? Just want to make sure. Okay, I'm closing off the numbers. No more numbers at this time, please. We will keep with just the ones from McKinsey's comment and up. Okay. All right, let's get over to our live scene. Okay, I'm gonna hit generate and we're gonna see who's got the closest number. All right, and here we go. 91, Mackenzie! <laughs> Mackenzie! Mackenzie, you won! Yours was the closest. 91. So, Mackenzie. I think, I, I think, let's see. What is your Instagram handle? Okay, Mackenzie, drop your Instagram handle in the comments. I will DM you from my account and we'll tell you a little bit more about how we'll do the, um, the giveaway, okay? Yes, because it's close to your birthday, isn't it? Wait, when did you say your birthday was again, Mackenzie? Was it the 15th? Wait, that'd be today. No way, is today your birthday? Or am I making that up? I can't remember the exact day you said. It's the 18th. Oh, awesome. Well, that's amazing. Yes, happy early birthday to Mackenzie. Shouting you out in the chat. You are a winner. Just make sure to DM me on Instagram. You can either do it on the Nancy Drew Times or Carter Plays on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I thank you guys for joining and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming aboard and we're gonna end this stream. So thank you everyone. Bye.